the beginning of the mash. This is just corn. You can see how thin that is. Basically just water. This has also got some back set in it. And it's just uh, just heating up the temperature. Once that's at 90 degrees, boil it for an hour. And then we're all uh, we're ready. Just start cooling it down. Introduce the rye at about 76 degrees. And uh, yeah, then basically hold it at that temperature for about 20 minutes. And then add in the um, barley malt when it gets to about 66 degrees. So I'll, uh, I'll come back when this is. Uh, started to boil and starts to thicken up. It's starting to boil away quite nicely. Um, it's literally just started to boil. It's actually, you can't really see it very well, but it is actually starting to get a bit thicker. At this point, you want to have a kettle full of hot water standing by, because uh, as the water evaporates, which will evaporate quite quickly, um, you need to top this up basically. So what we're looking at is 90 degrees, which I'm getting close to now. If I give that a stir, you'll probably change in a second. Don't, there we go, right. So uh, basically I'm also wearing my latex gloves again. Um, these don't offer massive protection. I would actually recommend yellow washing up gloves um, because when this gets boiling, and you see the bubbles breaking here, it actually starts uh, splashing up some of this st this stuff and when it starts to get a bit thicker it's like getting jam hot jam on your hands and it really hurts I would definitely recommend wearing protection for this if you have like me a short spoon um, if you're using a big pot and you've got a nice big spoon you might be all right but uh, right, well, I'll come back when uh, when this starts thickening up a little bit more it's already getting thicker you can see it there and uh, we're at boiling point. Cool, see you in a bit. Guys, this because this is about ow, five minutes after the last video, um, and it's uh, starting to get quite gloopy now, and the corn's not sinking to the bottom like it was before, and this is really, really splashing up. Don't forget, kettle over there. To top this up as the water evaporates, we don't want it to get too stodgy, and it will basically turn like mashed potato. It will become so thick once these starches have liquefied that uh, that basically you uh, the spoon will be able to stand up much better than that. Come back in a bit. Okay, we are 15 minutes into the boil. Um, already starting to get quite uh, quite gloopy now. We're sort of at the consistency of porridge. If you prefer porridge, you Americans out there, let, let go to Instructables. And at this point, I want to add a bit more water. So uh, just to top that off, it makes it a bit thinner. It makes it easier to stir. So I have to keep this stirring, otherwise it will burn to the bottom of my pan and it will ruin my pan. You have to keep it going. And I'll tell you what, this is the fourth lot of mash. Now this cooker was clean to start with. Have a look at the state of that, right? I cleaned this for this Instructable. Um, um, to be honest, I would rather have used a bigger pan. I wish I had, because each lot of this mash it's taken four, no sorry, three hours. So half hour to heat up, an hour to boil, um, 20 minutes to half an hour to cool down to 70 odd degrees so that I can put the rye in. And then cool down some more so that I can put the, uh, the barley in. And uh, yeah, and then basically keep it at that temperature for a little bit and then put it into the fermenter. So. Yeah, about three hours per batch, so that's 12 hours just to fill a 20-25 litre fermenter. It's a long old time, and it would have been quicker if I had a bigger pot. So, lesson learned, eh? Okay, so this is half an hour from starting to boil. And 
it's getting really really thick now and I'm having to use a reasonable amount of strength to stir it you can hear it look at that and uh, the spoon is not really falling over anymore so and at this point you'd think ah oh, yeah all the starches are cooked but you'd be wrong basically um, this is about half of the starches maybe and uh, it'll get a hell of a lot thicker very very soon I'll come back in another 15 minutes I'll show you how thick okay, this is 45 minutes into the boil it's incredibly difficult to uh, stir you can see the wake of the spoon in it as it passes through so I've got 15 more minutes to go and that's basically what I've got at the moment it's like the worst porridge you can ever imagine it is so thick I'll come back in another 15 minutes when it's even thicker an hour hey look how thick this is I can actually make a hole in it so I'm going to take it off the heat like so and not burn my thermometer and uh, turn the heat off and I need to keep stirring it which as you can see I'm going to have to do with two hands so uh, I keep stirring it for a little bit until it stops bubbling and stop it from burning to the bottom because this is a capsulated base saucepan and uh, yeah and then let it cool down for a bit so this is a couple of minutes after I've removed it from the heat um, you can see how stodgy that actually is it makes a little mound and uh, I'll stand the spoon up in it I've got the thermometer in there the thermal probe which is currently uh, 85.2 so I need to let that drop down to about 76 uh, I still need to keep stirring it even though it's off the heat um, give it a couple of stirs now and then and then at 76 um, I can add in the rye so uh, here we go fun times um, also look blister on my bloody thumb from uh, stirring so much basically I've done uh, probably about five or six hours of stirring all in all so uh, I'll come back when it's cooled down which will probably take uh, I don't know, about 15-20 minutes or so and then I can add in the rye and I'll show you that all cooling down just wanted to show you this, I can dig big lumps of it as it, get, as it cools it uh, it gets thicker basically and you need to keep stirring this even though it's cooling down because it will still stick to the bottom um, and uh, ooh. now that's not true because if I give that another stir that will change it's actually hotter than that so you've got to make sure that your th thermometer see the, the thermometer is over to one side I need to move it out into the middle give it a quick check so yeah basically uh, once that's down to temperature that's it we are now at the right temperature. I have my rye right there. These are rye flakes because it was easier. Put some in and then just sort of fold them in. Stodgy mess. As it cools, it gets much more stodgy. that in put some more in and keep working it in and then once uh, once I've got two hands I'll stir it in properly and then basically I need to leave it for a while to uh, to basically soak in soak in the uh, in the mash and you can see this is really really sticky now so uh, it's like well mashed potato basically 
So we want to, uh, with the rye, we want to let it soak in a little bit because we want the liquids to get into it and the flavour from the rye to impart onto the grain a bit. Um, we want a little bit, but we don't want a lot. If you'd make it a Kentucky bourbon, which that should be, then you've got more rye. So you probably want more, um, more kind of a spicier flavour. So um, we'll come back. See, it's already dropping. Dropping down in temperature there, boom, as we watch. So, um, yeah, you want to, um, we'll come back when it's got to, I think it's 66, and uh, and add in the barley malt. And the reason we're adding in barley malt is it's basically got an enzyme in it, which uh, will turn the starches, which is making what this stuff into essentially a mashed potato type affair. See that wobbly bit? Uh, that is uh, basically a lump of starch, which which is basically what we want. But the enzymes will turn this starch, this stodgy starchy mess, into uh, into sugars, which will basically make it go runny. Which I'll show you in a bit because it happens really quickly. I was very surprised. All right. Just wanted to quickly show you this. As it starts to cool, you basically end up with mash, basically. That's what it looks like. There's a big void in there where I've dug out a big hole. And it's um, basically a big lump. So we just gotta wait for it to, to cool down. Still very hot. Okay, we are uh, pretty much at temperature now, it can go in. So, uh, this is a seriously heavy mash. And a big hole, look. Right, here is my barley malt. I'm not going to put it all in one and go, I'll put a little bit in. I want to video this because, if I can, stir it while... Uh, while holding the camera, I want you to see how quick these enzymes actually work and turn this from this mash into a workable liquid basically. Let's put a bit more in. As they start to work, you will see liquid start to actually appear rather than this mash, which is what we've currently got. It becomes easier and easier the more and more you add. Which doesn't make sense because you're adding dry ingredients. But what, what's happening is, is they're breaking down the starch chains into usable sugars, which our yeast will then be able to use. Kind of here, it's becoming a bit more squidgy rather than mash-like. Right, I'm gonna have to give this a damn good stir, and I'll come back in a second. About a minute or two after doing the um, barley malt, you can already see it's actually less of a less mash-like, and it's actually starting to gloop together, start to become more liquid, which is basically the enzymes doing their job. So. Uh, if I dig a little hole here, you can see the liquid starting to form. And that's the, uh, the starch is getting returned to sugars. And because there's no starch in there, it starts to lose its rigidity. So basically, um, let's give it a couple of minutes. 
and stir it now and then. And uh, then basically when, when this is pretty much quite runny, we can put it in the fermenter. So this has been working for about 20 minutes or so. You can see it's already it's now nice and wet. The enzymes are definitely doing their job. So, uh, and I haven't added any water to this. This is just the enzymes. So I can put this in the fermenter with the rest and it will carry on breaking down these starches and uh, making sugars. And then we can, uh, once I've done all that work, we can strain it off and we've got the liquid to add the yeast to. Okay, so that's uh, the mash added to the fermenter. There's not much extra water that's gone into here. Only a little bit in the bottom of the pan just to clean it out. This has all been converted into sugars. All the starches have been converted. So that's uh, it's a good consistency. I'm just waiting for the temperature of this to get down to um, near enough a yeast working temperature. Then I'll uh, strain this off into another fermenter so that I've only got liquid and, uh, and add the yeast.